Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, the King of glory. Thank you, our King and our Lord and our Savior. Let your glory come down. Let it rain tonight. Come and take absolute control. Oh, mighty Jesus. We cannot function without you, Lord. We cannot function with the bag of iniquities in our hearts. And so we come to you, mindful of our sins, and asking you to have mercy on your children. Have mercy on us, O King of kings. O Lord, for your word says that whoever you forgive his sins, such a word is forgiven. Such a word is blessed, O Lord. Father, come and show mercy to your children tonight. Who will forgive our sins if not you? In Psalm 103, verse 3, your word says, that you are the God who forgives all our sins and heals all our diseases. Come and redeem us again. Come and show mercy to your children again. Father, have your way. In the name of Jesus, wash us clean with your most precious blood. Let nothing stand between yourself and your children. Whatever that will stand, be it sin, Father, take away. Father, whatever is that obstacle that will prevent us from approaching you, from coming to your presence, Father, Lord, may such be taken away in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because we have gathered in your name. And you are here with your children. We have obtained the mercies of yours. You have forgiven the sins of your children. And for this, we say thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We cover the atmosphere with the blood of Jesus. The instrument you are going to use tonight, we cover with the blood of Jesus. Every word that shall be spoken tonight, Father, we hand over to you that all shall be sanctified by you, O Lord. Let not even a word that is not of you come out from the lips of your son, but let you, O King of glory, speak through him. Use him as a microphone to speak. O Lord, let your blood sieve and, and the, see, sanctify every word that will come out from the mouth of your own son in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We are decreeing that it is well with us tonight, and we are inviting the angels of God to come down and be with us. We are inviting the mighty great mother of God, the our supreme mother, to come and hear and intercede for us tonight, so that that which is the will of God shall be done. And most especially, the fact that in John 2 verse 5, she tells us to listen to the word of God, to listen to Jesus. That word is what we have come to hear. And we're asking her, who is the model of the world incarnate, to intercede for us such that the word of God shall live in us, be tabernacled in us, and then bring enlightenment to us, and then bring glory to God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. My dear people of God, it is my pleasure to welcome each and every one of us to day four of our prayer for revival. We are standing in the gap. Perhaps we are coming for the first time in this prayer group, in this prayer ministry, and pray that the Lord, in whose name we gather, we bless you mightily and visit you at your point of need in the name of Jesus. We are in a journey, and that journey is journey with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has put it in us as a burden to pray for the land, that the land shall be able to know God, that the revival shall spring forth in the land. We're not praying for prosperity. We're not praying that somebody be, uh, be, be blessed financially. I mean, these are all good, and, and God is the one from whom all blessings come. But in this matter, the Holy Spirit has given us a mandate to pray for revival in the land. And that great revivalist is here, whose name is the mighty Holy Spirit of God. And so he is here to lead us in the prayer. And I wish to remind us that in the day three of this revival, uh, prayer for revival, uh, we were able to go through the scripture 
of Acts of Apostles, chapter number 4, verse 1 to 31. And uh, in that prayer, we saw the, uh, the, the way Peter and John uh, were humiliated, how they, they appeared, they were summoned before the council, and how God gave them extraordinary boldness, most especially Peter, who was speaking for the, for the community, and how God uh, used them to do wonders to the point that, as the scripture made us understand in, in Acts of Apostles chapter 4, uh, verse, uh, I believe verse 31, that about, that about 5,000 people were added to the number in the name of Jesus. About 5,000 people were added to, to that number. And that was a great, a great addition, a great increase to the ministry of Jesus in, in that time. And so today we continue with our prayers, uh, which is going to be taken uh, off from uh, verse 32 of Acts of Apostles chapter 4. And uh, the paradigm we are using is to pray the scripture, we read the scripture, and then we, the Holy Spirit will lead us uh, in, in, the, in the prayer points based on this, the, the word we have, we have read. And the aim is that the heart of man shall be hijacked by the Holy Spirit. Remember that the Bible may declare to us that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit wants to stay in his temple, wants to stay in the temple. And the, the altar of that temple, just like we know every temple has an altar, the altar of that temple is the heart of man. And the Holy Spirit wants to be at that temple where the altar of God, the, the altar of man becomes an altar of prayer. So even now, we are asking the same Holy Spirit that, uh, that has gathered all of us this night to bless us this night and uh, to touch the heart of men, to take over the heart of all men in the name of Jesus. Let him flow mightily tonight. Let him take over tonight every diabolical element that may have hidden in the heart of man, in the heart of anybody in our family or in the parish or in any way in America. We are speaking right now unto the heart of man. Can you begin to speak unto the heart of man in the name of Jesus? Yes, Lord, that this heart we are looking at, this heart of man, that the blood of Jesus has sanctified the heart, that the blood of Jesus has filled the heart in the name of Jesus, that whatever is the obstacle that has been set up in the spiritual realm to make the heart not to be open to the entrance of the Word of God, let that agenda of the enemy, that barricade, that wall, that limitation, let it be broken tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. There's nothing that can stop the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a great mover. Nothing can stop him. Nothing can tell him stop and he will stop. No way. He is the power of God in action. And we're asking him to move tonight in the name of Jesus. Let him move tonight and the touch hearts of men and women, men and women who have taken themselves off from God who has the Holy Spirit to enter into their heart, into their innermost being in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, the Holy Spirit take over the entire life of every person on earth in the name of Jesus. We are praying that God will arrest all people in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, my Lord, Holy Spirit take over. Let the land be green again. Let there be life in the land again in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of power. You are the transformer. There can never be any transformation of any kind without you. In Genesis chapter 1 and following, we are meant to understand that the world was full of voidness. It was emptiness. There was no beauty. Anyway, it was darkness. But you came and you hovered over the surface of the deep, over the surface of the waters, and then creation started. And we're asking you, Holy Spirit, to come and do wonders tonight. Hover over the land of America. Over, over the land of Canada, over the land of the, the North America, may you over, over the land again, as you did in ancient times, in the beginning of time, when you began to hover over the land, when even the time of Jesus and time of baptism, you came and you hovered over the river Jordan. I am a Sherry Karaba. We ask you, mighty Spirit of God, to come and do the same thing again. Come and hover over the land. Come and 
bring beauty again. Come and bring the light again. You are the spirit of light. You are the spirit of fire. You are the spirit of power. Come, oh Holy Spirit. We need you. We need you. We cannot do without you. In the name of Jesus, send forth your spirit and they shall be created. When you begin to minister to your people, when you begin to minister to people, even every innermost being of man will begin to be inclined unto you. So, Holy Spirit, do it again. Do it again that the church shall be a church on fire. That the church in North America shall be a church on fire. That the church in our own time and dispensation shall be a church on fire. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, that what you did, those great evangelical activities you did, using few people on earth in the Act of Apostles, in the first century Christianity, we are asking you, mighty Spirit of God, to do it again. Come and do it again. Come and possess us, O oh Holy Spirit. Come, 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 come. Amen. Holy Spirit, take over, take over, take over. Saturate the atmosphere with your power. Saturate the atmosphere with your anointing. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Let wonders begin to happen again. Let great things begin to happen again. In the name of Jesus. Let the spiritual atmosphere become unconclusive for anything diabolical to exist, for anything evil to exist. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he is my Lord. Holy Spirit, take over. It is written that when your people gather in the name of Jesus, that they will begin to do wonders. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 7 17, that wherever place you are, there is the freedom. Come and bring freedom in our time. Come and bring freedom to men who are in chains. In the name of Jesus, you are the yoke breaker. You are the yoke breaker. Holy Spirit, come and break the chains again. Come and melt the rock. Again, let the rock turn into water again. Let the water turn, let the rock turn into even a moving water, even a flowing river. In the name of Jesus. Come, 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 come. We know that when people call on you, you will never get fired. them. So even now we call on you, Holy Spirit, come and take over, come and fill our hands in the name of Jesus. That every man shall be a believer in Jesus Christ. That every soul of man shall be a believer in Jesus Christ. We are taking America as the point of contact in the name of Jesus. That the land shall become more sin with your presence, uh, your that the land shall be filled with your glory, in the name of Jesus. Let your glory come upon the land again, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, take over. Have dominion over the land. In the name of Jesus, may you raise the vengeance again. Yes, my Lord. People that carry the anointing of Elijah, people that carry the anointing of Daniel, the anointing of Elisha, let them manifest in the land again. In the name of Jesus, yes, my Lord. May you begin to destroy every work of darkness in the land. For the past days, in first Peter chapter, first John chapter three verse eight, let mark it in my heart. That for this reason, Jesus Christ was made manifest that he shall destroy all the powers of the devil. Even now, in the name of Jesus, let the power of the devil in the land of America be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, he might take a place in your heart. Every arrangement of demonic community against the work of God, against the work of God, against the destiny of people in the land of America. Let them be broken tonight. Let them be destroyed tonight. In the name of Jesus. Let somebody begin to pray. Let somebody begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. We are praying for the power of the land. Let them be the power of the land. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Go, go, take over now. Go, go, take over now. Yes, my Lord. Let the light shake. Let the shake. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. We are calling on you. We are not able to do my thing. There is nothing you cannot do. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Matthew 19, verse 20, that with the man, this is impossible. That with God, all things are possible. With the Holy Spirit, all things are possible. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are the Yoke Breaker. You are the mighty Yoke Breaker. Come and break this yoke. In the name of Jesus. Every yoke against the church, let them be broken. In the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, take over now. In my name, God, 
right now. We cancel that mandate of the enemy in the name of Jesus. We cancel their mandate now. Can somebody begin to pray? Every power that is on assignment from the pit of hell to bring division in the church, to bring division in the body of Christ, by the power that is in the name of Jesus, we set that altar of division on fire. We cancel that mandate right now in the name of Jesus. Can somebody begin to pray now? Can somebody begin to pray for unity in the church, in the body of Christ? Yeah, they can yeah, Pray now, pray now, pray now. It's all. Rebo, go say about. Let somebody begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. Pray now, pray now, pray now. That the faith of the people of God shall be on fire. These people never lost their faith. Their apostles never lost their faith. It's part of the attacks against them. We are going to pray that people shall not lose their faith in spite of the persecution. That in our hand, in our time, that the church shall not lose their faith in the name of Jesus. Can you begin to pray now? Oh, Jesus, so many people give up. Give up following Jesus because of persecution. Can you begin to pray? No more shall it be so that those who are living Christianity, those who are living the body of Christ because of Christianity, because of troubles, because of the death of the enemies, because of persecution, we make a yabasa, lima, sheribosa, let somebody begin to pray now. There are such a wave of the enemy attacking people to faith. Let it be destroyed right now. Let it be destroyed right now. In the name of Jesus, we are praying for unshakable faith, unshakable faith in the church, unshakable faith in the church. Even Peter's faith was not shaken. Even the faith of John was not shaken. In spite of the threat, in spite of the troubles, they never go shaking. Can somebody begin to pray? In the name of Jesus. Oh, my Shekayama. Jesus. Jesus. Pray now, pray now, pray now. On Shekabu faith in the land. On Shekabu faith in the land. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Pray now, pray now, pray now. Do you now see how they came together and how they began to pray? May God send us in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, my Holy Ghost. Jesus, we need your fire. We need your fire, Holy Ghost. 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 Release your fire in the church. Release your yes, fire, Holy Ghost. Release your fire, Holy Ghost. Let God release the fire. Ask him to release the fire. Let him fire your fire upon his people again. Let him fire your fire upon his people again. In the name of Jesus. And in the Bible says, in Acts 4, verse 23, they went back to their own people. They went back to the community. Hey, Jesus, we shall always go back to the community. We shall be separated from the Lord. We shall not be separated from the church. The people of God, in the first century Christianity, in spite of the troubles, they did not get troubled. They did not reject God. They did not separate themselves from the, the life of God. Yes, my Lord, even at this moment in time, we are praying tonight that we shall be separated from the church in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, He's God. Father, have your way. Father, have your way. Hell, my dear people of God. Let me repeat this Acts of 4 verse 3 again. That after they were released, they went back to the community. They separated from the world and went back to the community. God never wanted us to be one with the world. Because the world is darkness. From the time of even from the beginning of creation, God separated darkness from light. They cannot coexist. 
We are the people of life. We should go back to life. Genesis 1 verse 4. And the Bible says, God separated life from darkness. Indicating that he never wanted us to take part in the unfruitful works of darkness. In fact, Ephesians 5 verse 11 says, take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness. But he said, expose them. We are called to expose darkness. That was what Peter was doing. That was what John was doing. They were exposing darkness. So we are praying today that in our dispensation, let the people of God, let the church in America wake up to expose darkness in the name of Jesus. Let them expose darkness. That the church of our time shall wake up to expose darkness. Not to become one with the world. Not to be married with the world. Not to be annoyed with the world. But to expose darkness in the name of Jesus. Pray now, pray now, pray now. That the church shall expose the truth. They shall reveal the truth in the name of Jesus. Can somebody pray now? God is all. Every power of darkness in the land, let them be exposed now. Let them be exposed now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Let the marvelous light of God begin to flow over the land. In the name of Jesus. And that marvelous light is flowing. As that mighty light is flowing, let every power of darkness, let them begin to go down. In the land of America, let them begin to go down. The spirit of the world. Let them begin to go down in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Pray now, pray now, pray now. Let us enter into life in the name of Jesus. For only in Christ will find life. And the Bible says in Psalm 13, verse 9, that God is life. In Him we see life. He is life. In His life. Oh, Jesus. In His life we see life. Psalm 13, verse 9. Oh, Jesus. Let us be separated from darkness and enter into this life. Let the light flow into the land. Let there be dominion of life over the land of America. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Over every family. Let the light be. Begin to rain. Let the light begin to rain. In somebody praying now. In the name of Jesus. My father is separate from darkness. My father is separate from darkness. In the name of Jesus. This is the separate from darkness. In the name of Jesus. The body of Christ is separate from darkness. In the name of Jesus. The city where he is is separate from darkness. In the name of Jesus. Can somebody pray now? Can somebody pray now? Open your mouth and pray. That is all I'm going to say. In the name of Jesus. I shall walk in the light. I shall walk in the light. In the name of Jesus. Can somebody pray now? Pray now, pray now, pray now. I said, don't give up. I said, don't give up. We shall pray, 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 pray. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Pray now, pray now, pray now. I will have mercy with life. We shall have mercy with life. In the name of Jesus. In the hand of humanity. Let there be hunger. Let there be hunger. I will have mercy with life. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Pray now, pray now.
Going out to live as the children of life. So we are praying. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. In this time, in this time in history, that the children of this age, I pray the Christian pastor that the children of life, I pray the children of life. In the name of Jesus, and in Parishan, shall be people of life. In the name of Jesus, the pastors of this age, they mm-hmm. shall be children of life. In the name of Jesus, can you begin to pray now? Can you begin to pray now? Oh, Jesus, let the light of God begin to pray now. In the name of Jesus, take over pray now. Let somebody pray now. I say, don't give up. I say, don't give up. I say, don't give up. Let the church begin to pray. Let the church begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Pray now, pray now, pray now. The light of God is moving now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. I will live in the light. In the name of Jesus. We shall not live in darkness. Come around in darkness. We shall not live in darkness. In the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Oh, Jesus. Let somebody pray. Let somebody pray.
This reading is deep. It's pregnant with many messages for us, for the church. Number one, do you see that when Peter and John reported the threats against them, that the body of Christ, the church began to pray? The Bible says in Acts 4 verse 24 that they all raised their voice with one accord together to God and they began to pray. If you see that the way the prayer was composed, you know that this was the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not that, it's not that they, they sat down and began to write a letter, I mean the, 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 the prayer, to pray it. No, the Holy Spirit composed it and spoke to them. We see a praying community. This is something that is lacking seriously in the church of our time. You see them armed with the prayer. Prayer is a weapon. They didn't say let them go and they fast first before they begin to pray. No. Immediately they began to pray. Because every time they are connected to the Holy Spirit. A soldier that will only go and they practice how to fight when there is a rumor of war, is not a good soldier. A good soldier will always be soldier at any time, ready to fight. A good Christian will be ready to pray at any time because he's always connected to the spirit of prayer, the Holy Spirit. So even in today we are praying that the spirit of prayer shall be in the land, shall move into the church, shall enter into every family. The spirit of prayer, you need it in your family, you need it in your city where you live, even in the prison yards, even in the hospitals. People who come together begin to pray. They don't know what is going on. They just find out that they just ought to pray. Right there in the prison, you see people having fellowship. People who, who are even condemned the criminals, you see they're having fellowship because of the power of the Holy Spirit, putting in them the desire for prayer. And that is what we are praying now, that this Holy Spirit will bring the spirit of prayer the hunger for prayer upon the land, upon everybody in America, on the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, can we begin to pray? Let everyone be armed with prayer. Let the prayer become our Jews. Let the prayer become something we desire. Let prayer become what everybody will love in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, take over. Bring into the land. Bring upon the land the desire for prayer in the name of Jesus. Let there be desire for prayer. If I take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Can somebody begin to pray now? Let there be vibration of prayer. Vibration of prayer in the land. Frequencies of prayer in the land. In the name of Jesus. Even in the school system. Let the prayer begin to start. Let the revival begin to start. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Living prayer. Powerful prayer. I don't say prayer. Let this be fall. Let this be fall. In the name of Jesus. Ah, Jesus. My dear people of God, they prayed and nothing could stop them. And the Bible tells us in Acts of Apostles, chapter 4, verse 25 to 26, that you, you see them quoting the scripture. Let's go there. Acts chapter 4, verse 25 to 26. Look at what happened. They, look at the prayer. While they were praying, they began to quote the scripture in verse 25 to verse 26. Saying, It is you, referring to God, who said by the power of the Holy Spirit, through our ancestor David, your servant, 
Why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples imagine vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand, and the rulers have gathered together against the Lord and against the mountain. This was a quotation they were making. How did they come to know this quotation? If not that, they were conversant with the scripture. They were always going through the word of God. These we are not only people of prayer, but they were people of the word. People of the word, word, W-O-R-D, word of God. Not people of the world. People of the world has no business with the scripture. But you who call yourself a Christian, we who call ourselves Christians, we ought to be people of the word. Word. The Jesus that we we call our master is word incarnate. That is name. One of the names of Jesus is word. The word of God. And you see these people quoting the scripture. It was part and parcel of their, it was in their vein. They didn't say, let us go and study the Bible and see. No, they were quoting the scripture. The word of God was their companion. So we are going to pray for the knowledge of the spiritual in the land. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Let there be hunger for the word of God. Let there be hunger for the scripture. That people will begin to take the Bible. That the Bible will begin to be ordered even over the Amazon. People begin to order Bible and begin to read the Bible and begin to meditate on the Bible. That in every church, that the the Bible shall be there. That in every in, in, in every institution, that the Bible shall be there. Even in the school system, in the hospitals, even in the hotels, that the Bible shall be there. And not just there sitting there, but that people will open it and begin to read it. Can you begin to pray that there shall be hunger to read the Bible in the name of Jesus? That people shall be covered out the scripture. That the God of God shall live with the scripture. That the Spirit of God shall put the hunger for the word of God in us. In our time, let the heart of men be open to the word of God. Be open to the scripture. Be open to the mystery of the scripture. In the name of Jesus, pray now, pray now, pray now. If you do not pray, how can this prayer be answered? But when the people pray, then the prayer will be answered. In the name of Jesus, if there are people to pray, then they go to answer. Are you a part of the prayer? Open your mouth and pray. Let God hear you pray. Pray now, pray now, pray now. That the spirit of prayer, that the spirit of the scripture, that the love of the scripture shall begin to raise the land, shall begin to raise the land. In the name of Jesus, that people shall be driven toward the word of God. That people shall be attracted to the Bible, to the Word of God, to the Scripture, and they will desire the Scripture in the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer now. Pray that prayer now. Even among the teenagers, even among the youth, let them begin to desire the love of the Word of God in the name of Jesus. Pray now, pray now, pray now. Oh, Jesus, that as many that are praying now, May God visit your family and put the hunger for the future, even in your husband, even in your wife, even in your children, in your siblings. Let the word of God reign. Let the word of God reign in my family. Let the word of God reign in the land of America. Let the word of God reign even from the groupies. Let the word of God reign. Authentic word of God. Not God, not the, the word of God that is not that is not authentic. That the authentic word of God. Let it begin to reign. Let it begin to reign. In the name of Jesus. So, in our time, preachers have diluted the word of God. And you ask God for mercy. For what? His workers, his own elects have done. Look at the way they were quoting the scripture. Adapting it to the need of the time. Praying for the community, not for their own personal needs. That's the spirit, the spirit of Christ at work. Tell Jesus. Jesus. If you are not converted with the scripture, how can you know the promise of God for you? 
Because it's in the scripture that you know the promise of God for you. Is it not true? <laughs> if you don't read the Bible, you're not conversant with the Bible. How will you know that in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, there's a promise of God for you there saying, For I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and the future. It's only when you know the Bible. That's the written word of God. That you know his promises for you. God has given us this mighty book. That contains his promises for each and every soul on earth. Yes, that is the book that is, that is least visited. And yet, the author is God himself. So that is why we are praying for the desire for the word of God. Because when that desire is there, people will begin to spend time in the word of God. That is so important even for Jesus himself. He took his time to put this word into his disciples. When Joshua was taken over the leadership of, his, of Israel, God had to tell him to anchor, focus on the word. Do not turn right or left, focus on the word. And that's what the Bible is also telling us today. That's what the Holy Spirit is telling us today. Focus on the word. The Holy Spirit is there to help us to focus on the word. Because when we focus on the word, the word of God, we get it right. For the one who wrote it, who inspired the writing of the scripture, be the Holy Spirit, will become our teacher, telling us and interpreting to us what he meant by his words in the scripture. The church cannot be knowledgeable. The church cannot be strong unless the church is rooted on the word of God. There's no two ways about it. Let this enlighten us on the need for the prayer we have done. But I want to draw your attention to Acts of Apostles chapter 4, verse 29. Permit me to read it again. And they now, Lord, remember that they were praying, look at their threats and they grant your servants to speak your word with all boldness. Look at prayer they were making. Praying for boldness. You know, it is not easy to go against the, the culture. It's not easy. It's not easy to go against tradition. It's not easy to go against a norm, an established character of a society. It's not easy. You can lose your friends. You can be persecuted. You could lose your life because you have come with a message of light where darkness has been celebrated. Yet, Peter and John did not bulge boldness. Yesterday we prayed for boldness and I believe some few days ago we also prayed for boldness because it is so important that we should be bold. We ought to be bold. <laughs> the Bible says that the righteous shall be bold like the lion. Are you righteous? Did I hear you say yes? They have to be bold. Bold to defend your faith. It is okay not to say I'm a Christian. We have to live it and we have to share it. Christianity is, is, is not only only claiming it. It is also is a, is, is a life in action. It's a life of Christ. Lead. It's an action. You share it. Jesus shared his life. We, when we receive Christ, we share Christ. That is Christianity. And that is what we learn from Acts of Apostles. In every chapter of the Acts of Apostles, we see a people sharing Christ, sharing the life of Christ in our time. We are busy 
pursuing our own agenda, and not the agenda of God. I remember some years ago, I came to the altar to pray. The Lord said, before I go open my eyes, he said, pray for my church. Of course, I put my own petitions aside. You have no clue how this prayer is making heaven to be happy. Because we have come to pray. That same prayer that heaven is praying. That the church shall live the life of their of the Lord Jesus. So in our time today, there are so many threats against the church. <laughs> in so many countries, do you know that you cannot preach? You need to find out the kind of persecution against Christians in China, in North Korea, in Russia, in Middle East. I heard the other day that there's a law, I think in, 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 I think in North Korea, uh, that if anybody is found with a Bible, that person will go to jail, and every person in the family of that person will go to jail. Even if, if, that, even if that, we are, that is to be a, a child, if a child is caught with Bible, the, everybody, the parents, will go to jail. This is a threat against the church. Here in America, we have different threats against the church. Most churches have been threatened to lose their, their government support, their, uh, their, their, uh, their, their support for the government, even if they do not supports the agenda of the government. So, if the government is supporting the LGBT, taking their time, sponsoring billions to, to, to promote LGBT, and you come to the church and you are preaching against LGBT, and you are preaching against uh, abortion, you are going against the norm. Threat will come. And many churches have, this, have their mouths sealed. Many preachers have their mouths sealed. Because they will lose what they are getting from the table of Jezebel. That is a serious threat against the church. Sin is a worse threat against the church. In the church you find gossips. Pride, fear, worldly life, compromise, rivalry. People are fighting for positions. Even killing themselves. I'm telling you. Killing themselves in the church. <laughs> Sexual immorality in the church. This is still a threat. I cannot even talk much about what sexual immorality and the promiscuity have done to the church. We are much familiar with the sexual abuse, crisis, and scandal that have permeated into the fabrics of the church. Many of us do not get familiar with that word called pedophilia, but now it has become a, a word that is not that is not even known to the, apply to the world, but apply to the church in our time. What a shame! What a shame! So the spirit of the world is a serious threat against the church. Worldly spirit. Oh, Jesus. And in order to be accepted, preaching in our time is no more about holiness. Holiness is maybe taken about maybe 10% of the preaching. It's more of prosperity messages. It is more of that. How many times have you heard we preachers? I'm talking also about myself. How many times have we heard us talk about sin? It is no more popular. You talk about it to lose people. A friend of mine preached in a church against LGBT. The pastor called him after the church and said, Do not give the kind of preaching again. Who will pay for the house rent? Who will pay for the mortgage? The message is clear that the members of the church <laughs> happen to happen to 
be such a community. LGBT. So now, the spirit of the world has come in into the world, into the church, that the church, instead of changing the world, is now being changed by the world. What a shame. What a shame. Oh, Jesus. And the worst is the Western church. And time will not permit me to get into that. And thank God that this is why we are praying. And calling our prayer on the land of America. Hell, Jesus. So many things are taken in the church. Let your mind continue to go through them. They are all there. Even the media is present in the church. Culture, political belongings are all present in the church. People are bringing their political beliefs into the church. You see that? Lack of funds. Many churches have closed because of lack of, lack of funds. Many monasteries have closed up. And I'm sure you know that. It's disturbing. Is it something? Go and see the kind of money that is in the pocket of LGBT community. Just to encourage people to come and they're transgender. You don't, have, you don't need to have the money. Just the interest is what is expected. You go to schools, go to universities, they, they will give you not yet to talk to teenagers, to transgender. At no cost. The money is there if you can't afford it. The money is there. The community has a pulse. You see the way the unbelievers have set up a, a, a financial machinery to, to, promulgate, to propagate their, their, their agenda. But you, in the church, you see a struggle. A struggle to even put, change the roof. A struggle. Last Sunday, we had a, a church, a town hall meeting in the church, discussing, the pastor was pleading with everybody, please, to to support the church, for us to be able to renovate the building. And I, I, I told them, look, that one of the ways you can also help, help out this project is to go to companies, uh, we, have, we live in a, we are blessed in a community where there are so many companies. This BMW, you see, the SUV, is not far from my house. And I was encouraged, let's go to companies also for support. And you know what they told me? They said, they can give the money to other people, other communities, but not Christians. You see that? The world supports its own. So the church disciples, look at the years of struggle just to have our secretary. Look at the struggle. If it were people of the world, I tell you, they know how to get, they know how to support themselves. So these are the forces that get the church. Social forces. Even forces of modernization. Today we're talking of uh, uh, a move for women to become priests. What a nonsense. The church is under attack. I cannot even exhaust what I think are the, the forces, the threats against the church in our time. But we have to pray that every threat that they be taught must go down in the name of Jesus. They must go down by the power of Jesus. Every threat against the church in America, let them begin to go down in the name of Jesus. All the social forces against the church, we command you now in the name of Jesus. Begin to go down in the name of Jesus. All the political forces, all the cultural forces that are against the land, against the people of God, against the church, in the name of Jesus. We command you now in the name of Jesus. Begin to go down. Begin to go down. In Somebody pray now. Is somebody pray now? Pray now, pray now, pray now. Yeah, ba 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 ba. Every place I get the church. That was the prayer of Peter. That was the prayer of Peter. In Acts Apostles, chapter 4, verse 24 to 30, they began to pray. Praying against every power that was threatening their, their work, threatening the work.
house of God, gathering the body of Christ. That was their prayer. That today, it is our prayer. I said, today, it is your prayer. Let me just pray. He's the Lord. Pray now, pray now, pray now. I said, don't give up. I said, don't give up. Pray now, pray now, pray now. The church needs to pray. The church needs to pray. He's the name of Jesus. Every evil can, every piece of gossip that is in the church, let us be a fire. Let us be a fire. Let us be a fire. In the name of Jesus, pray now, pray now, pray now. Oh, Jesus, every power, every prayer, God made that prayer. I pray the church, go right now, be the sword of fire, be the sword of fire. In the name of Jesus, pray, 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 pray. In the Lord, let somebody pray now, let somebody pray now. Every man, they can have every power, every power. I hear the church, they keep on compromise. We set you on fire. We set you on fire. The spirit of the world. I get the church. We set you on fire. We set you on fire. Let the church rain. Let the church rain. Let the church rain again. In the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Don't be gone. Every spirit of sexual immorality that is in the church. In my day, we set on fire. We set that cut off. We set that cut on fire. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. The spirit of pedophilia. Because you are fire. The spirit of sexual immorality that has been done in the By the power of Jesus. Be the sword of God. Be the sword of God. In the name of Jesus. You can. You can find the top. You can find the top. By the power of Jesus, we command you now. Be the servant of fire. Be the servant of fire. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, my shame is the body. Let somebody pray now. In Bali, go to your mind. Let him be a terrible person. Pray now, pray now, pray now. Let him be a terrible person. Every power, every power that is taking the church back. Perhaps 
But when the, the fire is so much that people cannot contain it again, they begin to preach in places that are unfamiliar. Do not neglect what God is doing through prayer. Revival can take part even in the, in the White House. God is waiting for people like you and I to gather and pray. So we are praying that the signs and wonders shall fill the land, shall be everywhere. Let there be miracles in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says in Acts 4 and 31 that when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaking. I like that. I like that. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Already they have prayed for boldness in verse 29. So even as we have been, we have been in this place of prayer, the land has been shaking. The land has been shaking. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> so, and so may the land continue to shake that all believers shall come to Christ. Let the land shake that every ungodly instruction shall collapse in the name of Jesus. That the walls of Jericho shall collapse in the name of Jesus. Walls of Jericho against the work of God. Walls of Jericho against the people of God. Let them collapse in the name of Jesus. Because when the land shakes, there must be cracks in places of weakness. Foundations that are not written on Christ will crack and it will collapse. So we decree an eternal earthquake in the land that will sink evil powers, that will sink evil authors in the name of Jesus. Evil authors in the land. By virtue of this eternal earthquake, we command you, Holy Ghost, fire, let them sink. In the name of Jesus. Let our cultic temples, demonic commonwealths, hell, let them think in the name of Jesus. Let them not see the light of the day. Jesus. Hell. And then finally, may the Lord who has blessed us this day be glorified. We are covering this prayer with the blood of Jesus. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We cover our going out and coming in with the blood of Jesus. It is well with us. It is well with the prayer. Any agenda to attack this prayer will cancel the name of Jesus. And we'll cover our brother and family and job and ministry with the most precious blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for the instruments you have used to provide the songs. Thank you for such inspiring songs in the name of Jesus. Father, may the miracles you have done be permanent. And then may the land upon which you have prayed for the to escalate become a land of the gospel again. And we thank you because we know that you are at work already. In the name of J E S U S, can somebody shout Jesus? Jesus.